Yo, what up guys? Welcome back to another quick flutter tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how you can code stories similar to what you see on Instagram and Snapchat. So when you tap on one of these circles, it will bring up a collection of stories and you can see the progress bars at the top. I'll also teach you how you can tap the left side of the screen to go to the previous story as well as tapping the right side to go to the next story. Cool, so let me show you how to do this by jumping into the code. So open up a brand new Flutter project and let's delete everything below the main function so that we can start this from scratch. Let's create a material app pointing to my homepage and the homepage will make it a stateful widget. And inside, let's just create a blank scaffold. So this should just be a blank white app. And so in the homepage, let's start decorating. I'm going to put in just a background color and an app bar just saying stories. By the way, I made a separate tutorial covering the full Instagram UI, so check that out if you want. But for this one, I'm just going to create a column and have a list on the top just showing a bunch of circles. Now we should specify how many circles to create, so let's just say six. And let's put this all in a height of 100. Awesome, now we can't really see the separate containers, so let's add a padding. And it's actually a vertical scroll by default. So I'm going to change this to horizontal. And there it is. So now that the code is getting a little verbose, let's copy this and separate it out into a separate file. And let's put it in a folder called utility. And inside, let's create a Dart file called story circles. And so let's copy our little creation into this file. And now in the home page, I can just say story circle. So, so encapsulating the code like this makes it much cleaner. And we can just now decorate inside this separate file. So in the decoration, let's change the shape to circle, which means I need to declare the color inside this decoration. And that's looking pretty good so far. Now, one thing about these circles is I want it to be tappable. So let's create a function here and wrap this in a gesture detector. And so if the user taps this, then let's call a function. So what this does is if we come back to our home page in the little story circle, we can fill out this function. So if the user taps on the circle, what do you want it to do? We want to open the story, right? So let's separate out this method and just call it open story. And we're going to use a navigator.push to go to a different page. So we haven't created this page yet, but let's just call it story page for now. And let's create a new file just called story page dot dot. And inside, let's create another scaffold. And just so we can see the difference, I'm just going to give it a background color of deep purple. So come back to the home page and import the story page we just created. And let's see if this works. So if I tap on a circle, there it is. We are moving to this purple screen. Awesome, now in the story page, most likely there's going to be a few stories that a particular user has, right? So let's create a list here. And let's call it my story one, my story two, and my story three. So these are gonna be the individual stories in the carousel. So in our library, let's create another folder just called stories and let's create the three individual stories. And again, just so that we can see the difference, give them a background color. So green, yellow, and let's say blue. So now we can come back to our story page and import all of these files we just created. And so in the body, just to illustrate how this works in the list. So my stories is the overall list. So if I say, just give me the zero one, that will give me the very first story. And so depending on if I give it zero, one or two, it'll show the respective stories. Now you can see if I say three, because we don't have an index for number three, it's going to be an invalid range. Cool, so the way we want to go through these numbers is we're going to create a separate integer 
let's call it current story index and let's initialize it to be zero. So, so at the beginning, I just want to show you the first story. Cool. Now we want to move on to the next story as our progress bar has been filled. So let's create our progress bar now in the utility folder and let's call it my progress bar. And for this one, I am going to use a little package here, which I covered in a separate tutorial, which is called percent indicator. And I'm just going to use the version number as of today. So I made a separate tutorial covering this particular package. It's a really useful package. So check that out if you need more detail on that. But just to show you how it works, if you start typing linear percent indicator, you can see the package we just imported. And let's give it a line height of 15. And let's say 50% has been currently filled. And let's display this on our story page. Now, because I want this progress bars to be on top of the story, we're going to have to use a stack. So this is also another widget that I covered. So check that out if you need. But basically, this allows us to stack widgets on top of each other. So you can see it's currently at the very top. So let's actually just center this guy. And there's our little progress bar. So it's currently red, which I don't like. Let's change it to gray for the progress color. And the background color, let's make it a little darker gray. And you can see we can control this percent. So this is not going to be a fixed number, right? So let's create a separate double called percent watched, which at the beginning should be zero. And so in our story page, we can fill out the percent watch here. Okay, now I'm just going to create one last file, which is called story bars. And basically, I just want to add three of these progress bars into one clean file. So I want to have a row of three of these progress bars. And I'm going to use expanded widgets so that it divides it evenly into thirds. So come back to the stack. And now let's just import the story bars we just created. And you can see we have the three bars split up nicely. Cool. Now if I get rid of this center widget, it's going to come back to the very top. And so I just want to add a little padding in our story bars file. So just from the top, let's just give it some space. Awesome, looking good so far. Now what we need to do is we need to work on the percent watched. So for the percent watch, we don't want to just fix it to be 0 0.2 all the time, obviously. So let's create a separate list that has the percent watch for each three stories. Okay, so the first one is going to be percent watch zero. Second one is percent watched one. And last one is percent watch two. So again, when we create this my stories bars, we're going to have to pass in a list of numbers that just denote the percentage watch for each story. So the way to do this is in the initial state, when the app first starts up, I'm just going to do a quick for loop going through my stories and we're going to add to the list of percent watched zero. So meaning at the beginning, obviously all the stories haven't been watched yet. And then we can pass through this list to the story bar. So you can see currently they are all zero. And then what we want to do is when the app starts up, we actually want to start watching it, right? So let's create a separate method called start watching. And this calls for a timer, which I also made a separate tutorial for. So check that out if you need some more detail on that. But essentially we can say, all right, well, duration, maybe 50 milliseconds. And we're going to set the state. And what I want to do is just the percent watched for the current story I'm looking at. Let's just add 0 0.1. So if I save this, Oh, that was way too fast. Let's say 0 0.01. Awesome. So you can see as soon as this page comes up, it starts watching and filling up the progress bar. Cool. But because this is a progress bar, it has to be a percentage between 0 and 1. So if it exceeds 1, it's going to create a bit of an issue. So let's add a little bit of conditions over here. So we're going to only add 0 0.01 as long as it's below 1. Okay, so if percentage watched plus 0 0.01 is less than 1, then let's go for it. Just add 0 
but if adding it means that we're going to exceed one, then let's just set the percentage to be one. And also we finished this current story, so let's cancel this timer. And at this point, we want to go to the next story as long as there's another story to go to, right? So if the current story index is less than my story's length, then let's increment the current story index. Okay, and once we've done that, let's just call this start watching again. So it's just gonna redo this method, but the only difference is we're going on to the next story. One last thing we need to address is when we're at the last story. So if we're finishing the last story, then we want to just return back to the home page. And to do that, we're just going to use navigator.pop. Cool, let's see how this works. So if I tap on a story, it's going to fill it up and go to the next story and go to the last story there. So it, it does this very nicely. So yeah, nicely done. Now, the last thing I want to show you is the tapping on the screen. So if you tap the left side of the screen, I want to go to the previous story. If I tap the right side of the screen, I want to go to the next story. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to wrap the entire scaffold in the gesture detector so that the entire screen is tappable. And instead of using on tap, which is the common one that we use, I'm going to use on tap down because this one actually tells us some extra details. So if I separate out this method, This details, it tells us basically where we're touching on the screen. So if I use a bit of media query to get the screen width, and I create another double, let's just call it DX. And if you look at the details, it tells you the global position and we want the X. So just to show you here, if I print what DX means, if you tap on the very edge on the left, it should be zero and wherever you're tapping on the screen, it's how many pixels from the left side are you? So the closer you go to the right side, we're going to be the full screen width. So to know if the user taps on the first half of the screen versus tapping on the second half of the screen, we're just gonna compare, okay, well, is the place that I touched less than half the screen width, then we've obviously touched the first half. And so if we tap on the first screen, as long as it's not the first story, then let's set the current and the last story back to zero. And go back to that previous story. So just to illustrate how this works in practice, Once we're on the second story, you can see if I click on the left-hand side, it goes back to the left story. Awesome. Else, if the user taps on the right-hand side of the screen, if there are more stories left, then finish the current story and let's move on to the next story. Else, if the user is on the last story, then let's just finish this story. So you can now click around and skip through. Cool, so now that that mechanic is done, you can look at the individual stories here, like story one, story two, story three. Obviously for, for us, we just gave it a color, but this is where in these individual files, you can put in the image or the video to display the actual story. But in terms of the mechanics and the code, this is how it works. Cool, so hopefully that was easy to understand. I'll link the code for this below so you guys can take a closer look at it. But I hope you learned a little something, play around with it, and let me know if you have any questions. But other than that, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Laters!